Hey YouTube family, what's going on? It's me, your boy, back with another video. And as you can see, it's been a while since I've been in the, you know, in the, the garage, but uh, the time has finally come. I'm back to, you know, working on cars and check out what I'm working on today. So this is the Ford Explorer. It is the XLT 4x4. And I'm so happy that I got this as a, you know, at a bargain. As you can see, bam, the control track, four-wheel drive. So I'm very happy that I got this at a bargain. I cannot disclose how much I got it for because you probably will not believe me. <laughs> so the only issue that, you know, that it had was it was a fuel pump problem because I had a brand new battery, okay? No, you know. There was spark, but it would just go. You turn the key. Okay, so you already know. No fuel. Unfortunately, it's um, in tank. So, uh, unlike the Honda, where you can access the uh, fuel, the the fuel pump uh, from the you know just by removing the rear seat. This one, you have to drop the tank. So. If you haven't already done so, I would highly, highly advise that you empty out your fuel tank because it will help relieve some of that uh, weight off of your, uh, you know, well, you're not exactly going to put it on your back, but you know what I mean. It's going to help relieve some of that weight off of that fuel tank when you drop it. And... I had to do this anyway because look at how old that gas is. That's not normal, <laughs> all right? You see how brownish it looks? When you, when you pump out new gas, it does not look like that. And chances are this gas has been sitting in this tank for quite a while. And I would not want to be starting my car up with that. So... More than likely, I'm going to have to change the fuel filter too. And of course, naturally, when you do this procedure, make sure that your garage is wide open. You don't want to be trapping this air in your garage. You're going to possibly pass out, get lightheaded and all that ish. So safety, safety, safety precautions, okay? When you're done pumping out your old gas, just go ahead and replace the hose, but don't connect the clamp. I uh, also want, want to loosen and uh, undo the clamp and loosen the hose uh, just to get ready, you know, get it ready for when it comes time to drop it. Oof, I don't know about you, but man, that is some nasty gas. Uh, I think that's been sitting there for more than two years. The next step would be to remove the heat shield, which involves removing these two bolts right here. Okay, this and this. Underneath by the crank, um, right there. Not this one closest, closest to us, that's for the tank. For the heat shield, it's the one right back there, okay? The one further further back towards the back of the vehicle and then this one right here by the uh, rear driver's side um, wheel we have this one right here that will remove the uh, skid plate slash um, protective cover uh, for the fuel tank my word of advice even though it may seem like nothing. This is actual solid steel. <laughs> so it's going to be pretty heavy. Uh, my, my advice, definitely have something underneath uh, to help catch that. Now this piece right here, that's the, that's the uh, skid plate. That was what was pr uh, protecting the uh, fuel tank. Again, it's steel. So <laughs> it, it wasn't, you know, heavy, 
uh, per se, but it's still not safe if you're under it. Then there's the tank itself. So to unsecure this tank, now you would have to remove these two bolts right there. Okay. Hi, my little cat. And, and then after that, it, it'll still be held by this bracket, okay, which also held the uh, uh, skid plate. So once you have these loose, it'll sit in this notch, okay? But it will not go anywhere until we remove the strap, the belly band that protects the tank. So once you have that off, uh, this thing is going to... Uh, come loose and again definitely one you would want to have something underneath um, like a, a floor jack okay with, with a maybe a piece of board to help cover as much of the tank as possible all right so I went ahead and loosened the bolts I put them on top I bolted them up there so that I don't lose them and then I went in here and I went ahead and loosened up the belly band, All right? I took off the, uh, the bolt, is, which is now being supported by the floor jack and a piece of wood. That way my floor jack doesn't dent the tank. All right, I'm gonna try and lower the uh, tank, but I'm gonna get out of the way because I don't want to run the risk of getting squished. I'm going to go ahead and move this over to where the tank is. Because I'm going to try and take off the rest of that belly band. At least I know now that I would have to release this bad boy, but still support at least this side. If you haven't already done so, that you know, that's the reason why I had you folks uh, loosen your hoses uh, for your fuel lines. Okay, so that way when it comes time to lower this tank. And get access to the fuel lines and connections uh, that would easily come off as soon as you lower the tank just a little bit you don't want to lower it too much um, you're gonna first disconnect this plug like so this this is the one that goes you know up into the chassis so uh, that's why you don't want to uh, you don't want to pull too hard on that right now so just let that rest and this one is the one that's connected to the tank and then you're going to unplug this plug right there I know it seems really easy but trust me I had to I had to um, try a few times to get that right. Uh, the air rebreather valve, I've already taken that off. Um, it's, you know, it's resting up there. Uh, right, if I pull it down just a little bit, you see this little hose? That's what goes into your uh, rebreather valve uh, back there. All right, so you, you pinch, well, there was a, a locking mechanism on there you pinch and it's supposed to let go unfortunately it got um it got brittle and it broke so i may have to look for that replacement in the uh in the uh junkyard but otherwise i could probably jerry rig some sort of a locking device also with the uh, fuel lines it's gonna get really tricky you'll need to buy yourself a quick connect tool set uh, this is just uh, stri strictly for the fuel lines uh, this is the one that I used it was slightly too big so I had to modify it to, to fit inside the uh, into this you have to in you know you have to 
insert it in there and what that's going to do is it's going to release a uh, snap lock and it's going to help remove the fuel line just like it did over there um, so you do the same thing uh, for this line okay uh, they come in different sizes at first I tried this one but this one was too skinny you see that so it's too skinny so I tried this this one as you can see it's a little thicker I had to modify it so that it could fit in the, in that little inside the little fitting let me demonstrate to you okay it's gonna have to go like this All right and then you have to insert it in there like so and then pull the fuel line off it's hard for me to do this uh, one-handed but once you get that in there like so all the way then you should be able to you should be able to pull off the fuel line but like I said I need both hands so I'm gonna get this off uh, as soon as you get this disconnect tool in there so after I got the tank out of there I wheeled it out um, and I cleaned it out um, it was extremely rusty um, but it's not so much anymore uh, you'll see that in the next upcoming video that uh, I took out the uh, majority of the rust you'll see how bad it was and then here's the before and after here's the old unit as you can see it's clogged up really bad okay all that rust clogged up the uh, the filter it probably messed up the pump um, but there's the new unit and that's sexy right there uh, I verified that the connections are the same on both units so all I have to do is just plug and play yeah baby I've added a little fuel in there uh, just to show you that, that there's really fuel in there okay I don't want to send the unit down there all dry and everything and I also needed a little put a little gas in there to you know lubricate the tank after I uh, removed it with um, acid and removed the acid with a baking soda as a base to neutralize that acid so and then new gas in there just to lubricate the the metal ready for the unit when you're putting on the new unit please please do make sure that you took note of how it was positioned okay <laughs> so that uh, you won't have a hard you know such a hard time uh, putting this unit back on okay uh, by the way the bolts you could reuse the uh, the same uh, factory bolts that it came with and you can remove that with an eight millimeter okay we're about ready to put the tank back on but do remember this okay this clip so this clip right here it's going to connect back here like click after you put the fuel line you're gonna click that on it should hold it in place you see that right there that's this is what's gonna hold the fuel line in place so okay and make sure that the breather valve it has that little plastic connector to it um, I wasn't able to find a replacement but usually those are uh, they're they're pretty tight okay they're, they're just air or breather valves if anybody has had any problems with this coming undone because it didn't have that plastic clip, please, you know, post it in the comment section below because I sure as heck want to know. But so far, uh, I'm going to do, I'm going to jerry rig it so that it doesn't come off easily. Okay. So let's get the process going. Okay. I wanted to make a, a correction. Make sure that instead of putting it the way I said previously 
the, you know, that indented part should actually be on the fuel line that's connected to the chassis, not not to the uh, fuel tank. Okay, because the way this is set up. Okay, let me show you this one. This part right here. I don't know if you can see it right there. Um, this this part right here, where my the tip of my thumb is, that's actually supposed to go inside. Okay, after you connect it, it's supposed to go inside here. Okay, let me just demonstrate for you real quick. Okay, I'm putting this on right now, like so. Okay. Right here, you hear it snap? And then this part right here, this part is supposed to go inside. Okay, and then it's supposed to go inside. Like so. Okay? Just like that. You know the, the part that hooks in, it actually goes back here. Okay? And the part that's kind of pointy is supposed to go inside and it locks the fuel line in. Okay? All right, as you can see, the tank is installed. What I did was I made sure that, well, pretty much everything is in like in reverse order. Uh, I made sure that the tank, you know, the edge, you know, the, the little, I call this like the catch edge, okay? I put the catch edge in through the brackets, okay? And I supported it with jack stands. And I slowly, as I slowly raised it up, okay, I made my connections. And then I put the belly band, as soon as I, I raised it up even more, and then I put the belly band, okay, and I put on the, the bolt, Okay, and that's what's holding it up now. And then I went back to the you know to front and I connected these bolts right there. Those two. Okay, those two bolts. I connected them. And now it's nice and snug. Okay. Last but not least, don't forget to put on your fuel lines, okay? Your your the you need this. You start pouring gas in your uh, spout and next thing you know you're gonna have gas coming out not even going into the tank so use the eight millimeter to put you know tighten the um the, you tighten your uh, bands and you're ready to go last but not least if you are going to change your fuel pump you had dirty dirty fuel sitting in your lines for god knows how long you might as well change your fuel filter while you're at it. Now, if you don't know how to change your fuel filter, it's pretty much the same on all Fords. This one was sitting underneath the uh, um, driver's side door, uh, right right where the uh, the hinge. As you can see, it's it's not that far from the fender uh, from the fender well, but you disconnect the fuel lines by unclipping them just like how you did with the fuel lines on the tank you unclip this and you unclip that and you just you know un uh, remove the clamp oddly enough when I did that <laughs> this was the old fuel filter that was in there and as you can see it is significantly smaller <laughs> than um, the uh, OEM size that um, that it came with. I, I should have recorded it because it was funny. This thing was in there and it was clamped. Uh, there was a piece of paper um, paper towel or some sort of cloth like the, the blue shop towels. And somebody rolled it up, wedged it in between this and the clamps. And <laughs> it was it was weird. But I got the Motorcraft one, the the Ford OEM style um, fuel filter. Okay, so hopefully this is uh, all it needs. Um, I'm gonna start her up soon. Obviously, before you do any of this, 
I left the skid plate off for now because I'm not only going to put it back on, but before I put it back on, I'm going to put some um, truck bed liner um, coating uh, on the outside of it. So I'm going to make it a little, gonna make it look a little more interesting. So here I go, uh, going into the driver's door. Okay. Now, don't crank it all the way on, okay? You're gonna want to uh, give it a few turns on the key. Okay, off, okay. I can actually hear the fuel pump priming, which was cool. I'm gonna do this about three or four times, okay? That's two, before I actually completely turn it on. Yeah, I could, I could definitely hear the fuel pump engaging. Um, so I'm giving it a couple of times a uh, pump so that all that fresh fuel makes it all the way through the lines. Okay. Okay, I'm really nervous. I'm really hoping all this hard work, you know, pays off in the end. He's alive! He's alive! He's alive! <laughs> yes! Victory! Oh, running, finally running. Oh my gosh. I think that was like probably one of the hardest things I've ever had to do. All right, let me shut it off. For, you know, let me shut it off for now. There's a couple of things I also noticed that I need to change, and that's this hose right here. It's a little uh, too long and it's kinked, so if I just cut that down a little bit, that's what I'm gonna do right now. Well, at least we know and we've solved the mystery of the no start. So it was the fuel pump all along and definitely, definitely want to change the fuel filter while you're at it because it's all fuel related. Now, when I started it, if you only had smell of vision you would have probably smelled some of the old fuel getting burnt and then it started smelling nor like normal gas again. So it takes you know whatever engine you know whatever gas that was in the engine or in the lines you know run it for a few minutes let that old fuel burn off the new fuel will clean out your system and i'm event you know i've only had 10 gallons in there so far so uh, i'm going to fill it up the rest of the way and add some sea foam to that it always you know sea foam's always been my you know, a really good friend of mine so let that you know let that tip uh, help you out so if you're ever in the same situation here's what i've been working on since last night as you can see i've layered on the under coating i i know i said truck bed coating but it's actually an under under coating that i put on the uh, skid plate it looks really really nice now don't it so I'm going to go ahead and install that. Now that the skid plate is on, he's ready to go out landing, huh? So if you found this video very helpful in your situation, if it's similar to mine, please don't forget to hit that like subscribe turn on the notifications bell 
so you get more videos in your algorithm just like this one. Until next time, stay out of trouble, you crazy kids. All right, see ya. Bye.